why I'm doing this video because my knowledge of football extends very, very short distance. But then again, I'm a fan. I love to watch. But that's why I got a couple more knowledgeable people. Uh, anyways, but first off, you know, I'm going to copy everybody else that I do videos with and do introductions. First off, he is the one, the only, the... I'm not sure how to describe him, the uh, Mexican taco king of the world, wow. <laughs> MVP. Well, I guess I'm honored to be here at Cornfield Productions, and let's see how this fares well. <laughs> and then, and, and by the way, people, it's just a joke. You don't understand why Mexican taco king. Don't worry about it. Anyways, yeah. <laughs> the other man also from from the state of California, you know, his heart resides in Florida. He is the man that he is the man that time forgot. He is the oldest person in the universe. Even older even older than oh I got no comparison, so oh well. Anyways, he is Lou. <laughs> How you doing? I'm glad to join your little cast here. And we're taking the division this year. I'm just letting you know. <laughs> well, anyways, guys. So what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna pick the divisions, each of the divisions in uh, the National Football League. If this well, if this does well, because this video won't do well. But if we enjoy, if we enjoy it, we'll maybe do some more throughout the season. So, anyways, we're gonna start off. With the, well, hey, what do you know? The first division, the AFC East, which contains the <laughs> Buffalo Bills, the Miami Dolphins, the New England Patriots, and the New York Jets. And we'll start with the man whose heart resides in this division, Lou. Lou, who's winning? <laughs> As we watch Lou eat some food. Who's winning? Should we even ask? <laughs> I say it's going to be a real race in this division this year because uh, we got Sean Marino. He's going to be a good running back. He might be the sleeper in that division. Um, I think we're going to get a 10-6 as well as New England, but we're going to win their. We're going to win the head-to-head -head competition, and uh, we'll make it. So uh, the Jets. I don't see nothing happening in there. Buffalo. Mm, nah, not gonna happen. So it's a two right, well, two team racer, but Dolphins take it. All right, folks. As for me, we're going to MVP last. As for me, again, as I I don't know every a whole bunch of players, I can't be thoroughly knowledgeable, but just based on watching football over the years, and just from my own perception. No offense, Lou. Dolphins ain't gonna do shit. It's You'll gonna see. be it's gonna, your mouth. It's your gonna mouth. be run away. It's gonna be run away division as it always is. The winner of the division is gonna be the New England Patriots. Now we go to again, Mr. MVP. No, not Montel Vontavious Porter and TNA. No, no. <laughs> the MVP of the West Coast, Mr. Will, who's winning that division? All right. Well, you know what, though? I have to agree with Lou. I have to agree with Lou, but I have to do agree with Lou about one thing. I mean, the Jets are, are going to stick with Geno Smith, and they have no type of receivers. They're shopping Stephen Hill. I, I think they're making a big mistake right there. Uh, they do got CJ2K, Chris Johnson, so I guess their depth's gonna be okay running back. Buffalo, okay, they just they just signed Jordan Palmer to back up EJ Manuel. I do see Sammy Watkins, however, gonna have a good season. Now it's gonna be a race between the Dolphins and the Patriots. I mean, Ryan Tannehill barely got over 2,700 yards the last season, but the running back game was in deplic because of between Miller and and uh, Daniel Thomas. But now the acquisition of Moreno, you know, now there's gonna be some veteran leadership. But 
I see, I'm sorry to say this, but all due respect, I see Miami at least with one of the two wild card spots with San Diego. I see the Patriots only winning because, let's just face it, Tom Brady knows how to win games with different receivers. He knows how to throw the ball. So I got Patriots at 11 and 5, Dolphins 10 and 6 with a wild card, and the Jets and the Bills again for the second straight season outside looking and crying with toilet paper. Well, okay, that was uh, that's again people. That's why I bring him, him and the and the on the show because they know what they're talking about. Anyways, moving on to the AFC North, it is the Baltimore Ravens, the Cincinnati Bengals, the Pittsburgh Steelers, and Hoyer versus Manziel. Oh wait, Hoyer starting. So uh, okay, Cleveland, the Cleveland Browns. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna start this one off and tell you right now that before the season began, I had hopes. I had hopes. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to preach to you. I had hopes, ladies and gentlemen, that the Cleveland Browns here were going to run away with this division. They were going to win. They were going to make the playoffs. They were going to lose in the playoffs. But they were going to do some amazing <laughs> things, ladies and gentlemen. How did I get the name in? Oh, no, no. Anyways, so basically what's going to happen is they were going to win the division and lose the playoffs. But here's the problem now, folks, and this is why I can't put a little bit of knowledge in. The best damn receiver that got Josh Gordon, as we most of us found out today, lost his appeal to his suspension and is not out for the season. Smoking mm. a little uh, some weed, so that's gonna hurt him bad. Then watching preseason, Brian Hoyer, Johnny Manziel. They both suck. And then again, maybe Hoyer's still recovering from that injury. I don't know. But so they 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 he, they ain't gonna win. As for the Ravens, well, they could. I I wouldn't bet my money on it, but they could. Steelers, um, well, it depends if Big Ben is Big Ben or Big Ben just falls flat. Um, ends for the Bengals. We got Andy Dalton and whoever the hell else because I don't know anybody else on the on the team. <laughs> uh, I'll just go random. I'm just gonna go random right here and pick the Bengals. That's that, that's just a random pick though. Anyways, MVP. All right, let's just go for the record, folks. It's what Michael said about Brian Hoyer. It was week four that he suffered that nasty injury right. last season. And, and who did they give the ball to? And who, and who did they give the ball to? Jason fucking Campbell, who couldn't throw worth a lick. I'm sorry. Cle Cleveland is not going to make the playoffs because they lost Josh Gordon. They barely got Ben Tate as the... They're going to be the number one running back. Now, Pittsburgh is going to have a problem assessing their running game because Le'Veon Bell and LeGarrette Blunt were just arrested on marijuana charges. So this is going to hurt them a little bit as much, though. Uh, their defense is getting primarily old, so to each their own. Now, Cincinnati has evolved now that Geno Atkins is finally 100% recovered from his injury. A.J. Green's going to probably go for another 13-yard season. Uh, Giovanni Bernard, he has been their number one back. Ben Jarvis Green Ellis just needs to go somewhere else. He hasn't been a good running back since. Uh, Andy Dalton, I just think he needs to develop a few more years. He's, he did get the yardage. I think Cincinnati's organization paid him a little bit too much amount of money, but you know he's going to get there. Baltimore... I don't know what flock was on to get that money. I mean, at least he got Steve Smith and Torrey Smith and Jacoby Jones. So my pick would have to be Cincinnati winning the division and the other three teams uh, out on the outside because the Bengals now with their defense boosted up and Fontaine's perfect got a new deal, Bengals got the north. All right, Lou, your turn. Well, I have to agree with both of you on that one. Um, like you said, Browns, Mazel, Lawyer, I haven't seen much of them preseason. I mean, they're not looking that good. Uh, Ravens, do they have a chance with Steve Smith as wide receiver? Maybe. They can probably get a wild card spot. But 
more likely than not. Uh, now that we're San Diego, they're not. Let's see, uh, <laughs> um, Cincinnati, uh, Dalton, they're, they're uh, comparing him to uh, Peyton. So they think he's the next best quarterback. So I could see Cincinnati winning the division there. And for Pittsburgh, you don't know. Like you said, if Ben going to show up, we're not going to show up. You know what I'm saying? They've got no run. I didn't see no running game with them either. So, like, I agree with both of you. I think Cincinnati takes it. All right. We're moving on to the next division. It is the AFC South, which consists of the Houston Texans, the Indianapolis Colts, the Jacksonville Jaguars, and the Tennessee Titans. And uh, MVP is going to go first this time. All right. Well, you know what? I'm just going to say on record, Houston's defense with the acquisition of Javadion Clowney on the other side with J.J. Watt, like our friend Wild Bill Reset used to say, now that you got both ends with two of the best defensive ends are going to hit defenses like no other before. What do I mean by that? They're going to pressure so many offensive lines, and that must be Drew Rose now. I'm just kidding. Oh no! I just think Houston's, Houston's defense is going to be very good this season, but I will not trust Ryan Fitzpatrick as a quarterback right now. You know, Aaron Foster get, getting off injury. Who knows? Uh, Andre Johnson and DeAndre Hawkins, their receivers. Mm. It's going to take time to develop. Uh, what else? Jacksonville. They just lost MJD to the Raiders, but they do got the so-called horse in Toby Gerhardt. So, I mean, he playing on a small two-year $13 million deal seems pretty interesting. Uh, Blake Broyles has actually did a lot better, so I'll give him credit. He's he he's not like the Mark Brunel when they debuted, but he's shown a lot of promise. So, I don't know. Uh, what I'm really concerned about is Tennessee right now. Jake Locker, he was madly hurt last season. And, you know, Fitzpatrick was the quarterback at the time at Tennessee. Now that he's with Houston, I don't see very much progression with Tennessee other than they got Dexter McCluster, who's going to be probably a flex back. To, and and all eyes are going to be on Justin Hunter as their wide receiver. Now, Indianapolis, I think they're going to run away with this because, you know, Andrew Luck, uh, Reggie Wayne coming off an injury. T.Y. Hilton came off a very good season. Ahmed Bradshaw. But Trent Richardson, when they got this guy, he did pretty good. But after week six, he went down faster than the dead horse. I'm sorry. Indy has this one. I do see contendership in Jacksonville, actually, but Indy got this. Because Andrew Luck, he's going for another 3,300 yards. So I got Indy winning. All right. We'll go to Lou. Um, this division I haven't really paid much attention to this preseason or any other season like I care about this division. Um, will Houston have that big winning streak like they did last year? Maybe. I don't know. Um, will they falter in the end? Good. Um, I see Tennessee being up there. They can probably get the ball spot. Jacksonville, I see no interest in. And uh, Colts, like uh, he's like MVP said, they got luck and everybody else getting healthy and everything else. So uh, a two-way race between Titans and Colts. But I see the Colts winning the division by two games. As for me, um, well, first of all, let me put it like this. Jaguars. <laughs> Enough said there. Titans, well, I just whooped the Titans in Madden, so I don't know, you know, I have nothing to do with it. Um, no, I, I don't see the Titans getting very far just because, because, yeah. Again, remember, folks, all of my knowledge is just from watching games. I don't have an extensive, like, player by player, stat by stat knowledge. It's just from my personal view. The Texans, you know, after the last couple of years, you know, a couple of years were doing good, and then last season just fell apart. I think the Texans have a chance as long as their um, uh, offense picks up. Their defense is going to be beast now, like MVP said with uh, 
um, uh, clowning and going up, coming up with JJ Watt. Um, but unfortunately, Andrew Luck is Andrew Luck, and the Colts are going to run away with this division. No, I don't know by how many games, but they're going to win. Anyways. One of the most interesting divisions in the NFL, at least in my opinion, the AFC West, which consists of the Denver Broncos, the Kansas City Chiefs, MVP's second cousin, the Oakland Raiders. Yes, my ass. <laughs> and the San Diego Chargers. I will start this one and say it is no doubt we guarantee. The Denver Broncos win this division handily. Now, did the Kansas City Chiefs have a chance last year to win the division? Yeah, because they were 9-0. and And then took a big shit and almost fell out of the playoffs, which would have been funny as hell, but nonetheless. Um, the Raiders are the Raiders. I don't see much happening there. You know they got one of my favorite receivers from my team, James Jones, now. But, now again, James Jones kind of sucked last year. The Chargers, I would actually give the Chargers a outside chance of possibly winning. Only because I felt the Chargers were pretty good last year and really picked it up. But, again, it's going to be the Denver Broncos. Paint Manning, Paint Manning, no, it's, it's just not happening. Um, MVP. Well, I'm going to uh, add a little something to what you said about San Diego. Remember, San, it was San Diego last season that beat the Bengals in the upset in one of the wild card playoff games last season. Nobody thought San Diego was going to come up, but they did. And that's why I am not going to underlook San Diego. San Diego is actually my second wild card pick. I think San Diego has what it takes right now with the invigorated Philip Rivers. He has now Donald Brown, which they were acquired from the Colts. So it'll be him and Ryan Matthews sharing the carries, in which very good tandem in my opinion. Antonio Gates and you know they're they're better of the two wideouts between Keenan Allen and Malcolm Floyd, which is very, very good. So I see San Diego as a second wild card spot along with Miami. I am gonna say right here in this video. Oakland, I'm gonna say theoretically right now, I am a Raider hater. Everybody knows that, but this year I see them doing actually wonders right now. MJD, Matt Schaub, James Jones, Justin Tuck. I mean, look what. Who's their quarterback? Matt Schaub. Because Derek Carr is hurt right now. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, the Raiders did good much in the offseason as much as Denver did. So, I look for the Raiders to beat out KC. Now, a problem I have with the, uh, with the Chiefs right now is their wide receiver corpse is dead. I'm sorry. Dwayne Bowe is going to carry that load. Jamal Charles, he was a good, good running back. When the, when the, when the playoffs. Uh, when they lost to Indianapolis, that injury killed Casey's chance of advancing because Casey would have upset in Indy. So, and like Mike said, Denver's going to run away with it, but there was a problem. Wes Welker got hurt, for those who don't remember. Wes Welker did get hurt. So, uh, but Denver's still going to win that division. San Diego's going to get the other wild card. Raiders, they're going to go 8-8, eight and eight, but they're going to miss it. And Casey, unless they start building their wide receiver corpse, I see only Alex Smith and Jamal Charles carrying that offense because Bo, he's still kind of stiff right now. I'm sorry. Lou. Did you forget about Travis Cleese? 10 reception, 185 yards, 2 TDs in preseason for Kansas City? Uh, <laughs> who's that that thing going? Um, I see Kansas City uh, challenging the. I see Kansas City challenging the Chargers this year to make the uh, play out the wild card spot. Um, Chargers, I said uh, eh, they're okay. I mean, only see one of their games. I didn't see the whole game for preseason, so I don't watch any of the AFC except for my team. Um, but it's nothing to be said. They were uh, Peyton. Uh, Two words. <laughs> Playoffs. 
that's about it. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we move to the NFC, and I'm going to skip over that division and come back to it. So we're going to start with, we're going to start with the NFC West. Oh, here we go. The Arizona <laughs> Cardinals. The Arizona Cardinals. The St. Louis Rams. The San Francisco 49ers. And the defending Super Bowl champion, Seattle Seahawks. And MVP's going to go last in this one since his team's in that division. And his third cousin, also. Um... Start cousin. <laughs> I'm gonna start and say, wow, C Seattle is just killing it. I, I, you know, at the beginning of last season, I seriously doubted any, but everybody that said Broncos and Seahawks, they said that at the beginning of last season, the Super Bowl, and it happened. But I didn't believe it because I didn't care about Seattle. And then they just killed every, well, not everybody, but they they did such a good job. They got all the way to the Super Bowl, and they just, oh my God, they killed the Broncos. But I thought, okay, okay, you got you you had your Super Bowl win. Now you're probably gonna falter a little bit. You're still make the playoffs, but you're falter. And you know. They're fault toward it and you end up missing out. But now it's like, ah, I mean, they're still killing it. You know, there, there's, you know, everyone's gonna say, okay, is the Madden curse gonna affect um, Richard Sherman? I don't believe so. I, I don't believe it will. I believe he'll just he'll be his normal self, killing himself. But, however. Let's see. Like I said, you know, before I get to that, St. Louis Rams, they, they got a they got a good team on defense from what I've seen. Maybe I'm just seeing shit. I may be high. I don't know. I don't smoke, but still, but their offense is gonna be terrible, especially without Sam Bradford. Arizona Cardinals are really looking good. They started looking good then last season, and MVP was talking about some guys they just picked up, and he'll he'll explain that when it gets to his turn. But I don't believe I don't believe they'll make it. Um. I'm actually going to go, like I said, I believe the Seahawks would falter, and I still believe they will do just that. And I believe the 49ers will take the division with the Seahawks taking the wild card. Anyways, M I mean, not MVP, I'm Lou. Go ahead. Mike, 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 Mike. Almost everything's correct for, except for your last statement. Um, I don't know what games you've been seeing on TV, but I've been seeing Seattle doing pretty good on their offense, sir. Um, Arizona, will they will they make it? No. Uh, Fitzgerald doesn't get enough uh, receiving catches, not enough touchdowns. They're not going to work. St. Louis, no. I don't even make it. I don't even make it. Well, I never said Seattle. The only two teams that, <laughs> only two teams that we're talking about in this division. The only two awesome teams that we're talking about in this division is San Francisco and Seattle. Right? Seattle's been owning San Francisco for the last year and a half now. Um, until 49ers overcome that hump, Seattle is going to win that division. Okay? There's nothing. And uh, the games I've seen so far, uh, CK hasn't been running that much. I think they got the run his running game down. So I'm not going to be going to probably say something different when it's his turn. Because he's a 49er fan, of course. But uh, all I can say is repeat Super Bowl champs. That's all I'm saying. MVP, you gotta have a you gotta have a uh, remark to that. Uh, he's rolling his eyes. MVP, go ahead, sir. I rolled my eyes. Oh, okay, Mr. 25% stock of Chef Boyer D back there. I'm gonna pull a Woody. I'm gonna pull a. I'm gonna pull a Woody Page, uh, Woody Page from around the horn. Do I gotta set you straight for a second? <laughs> Let me tell you something, brother. brother. Golden Tate, Golden Tate left for Detroit. So now who did they gotta put their wide receiver corpse on? Percy Harvin, who did well in the Super Bowl. But remember, those injuries 
play what almost could have been their season. But hey, that forty three to eight wasn't no fluke. They scared Peyton out of his damn jersey. So yeah. But but here's the problem. Most of Seattle's defense went to Jacksonville because of one guy, Gus Bradley. Gus Bradley. Uh, have you been seeing any preseason games, sir? I have watched some of your games, but but I'm talking yeah. about the performance of how Seattle is between now and what they did last season. Yeah. So let's not get copacetic about this. Seattle will be in the front running, but without Tate, without Bryant, without most of their front tackles that they lost. Seattle is not going to have their best defense other than Sherman, other than Thomas, other than Chancellor, other than their rookie Bruce Irvin, what they got. That's primarily it. I'll give the Legion of Boom their credit. But remember, Seattle did say that we were the toughest game better than the Broncos, for those who didn't read the report. So, I mean, and remember, too, I'm going to bring another fact like Pablo Torre said around the horn. Seattle has never beaten us at home. Okay, we can go into the 12th man and lose, but when Seattle comes out here to the Bay, they have never beaten us. Never. So let's put that rationally put. Now, as far as St. Louis, young defense, Robert Quinn, Michael Sam, James Laurinaitis, and their young defense with Tim McDonald Jr. And Mike didn't mention about Arizona. They just acquired Tommy Kelly. Now that Darnell Dockett left, and there's a possibility that they might sign James Harrison, former Steeler and Bengal. So if Arizona keeps their tabs, they may contend with us, but Arizona will never contend with Seattle. That's that's just partly point. So my pick is it's gonna be it's gonna be a a, a dog fight between the Niners and Seahawks once again. So with everything that Seattle's been through, they'll see the playoffs. They won't see Super Bowl. So I'll say either way, Seattle or San Francisco winning that division, Arizona and St. Louis will be on the outside looking in because there was a lot of adaptations between both teams, but. It's going to be a coin flip between Niners and the Seahawks again because they're the only two teams that other conferences will fear at the moment. All right, ladies and gentlemen, next up is the uh, NFC South, which consists of the Atlanta Falcons, Carolina Panthers, New Orleans Saints, and Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I've already gone on record with some people tonight and said I think the New Orleans Saints, the New Orleans Saints will win this division. Tampa Bay, I, I just, I, I'm not very, the NFC South is probably my least knowledgeable division, so I'm not going to spend too much time talking, I'm just saying from my view and watching Stevie, maybe I'm not watching it right, I don't know, I'm going to go to New Orleans Saints, but let's get to the people that know more than me, as I did not put myself on camera when I was speaking, but oh well, Lou, <laughs> NFC South. And the C South. Hmm. Let's see. I think Atlanta is going to challenge the Saints this year. Don't they got Julio Jones back this year? I don't think they do. They, um, probably, they might. I have no idea. Who? Yeah. This. Yeah, they got Julio Jones back. Um. There's not much to say on this either because I don't watch this division as well. Um. But I do see Atlanta. Fighting for a playoff spot, I think they're going to get the sixth wild spot for the playoffs. Um, I do not see uh, I don't see Tampa Bay making it. Carolina maybe. I know they got Cam Newton. Um, I think it's a dog race, but New Orleans takes the uh, the South with Atlanta right there, about three games back, and Atlanta gets the wild card spot. All right, MVP, NFC South. <laughs> oh, Lou, have you have you underlooked how Tampa ha, how Tampa Bay with their acquisitions? Ha, have you really I asked yourself? I don't care what Tampa Bay has. Uh, well, I have to Woody page you again. Tampa Bay Woody has a lot of promises here. Tampa Bay with their acquisitions has done a lot better. Mike Evans 
is going to learn under Vincent Jackson. They're going to be the best tandem in Tampa Bay's wide receiver corps. And guess who, and guess who they're going to catch balls from? It ain't Mike Glennon. That's for damn sure. Because he's back in the – it's going to be Josh McCown. I think he outplayed Jay Cutler when he was in Chicago. I think now that Lovey Smith did very well – with him when he was in Chicago. I'm pretty sure Lovey Smith is going to do the best thing and make Josh McCown the week one starter for Tampa. I'm not going to underlook Tampa this season. I'm sorry. Tampa got a lot of problems, especially their new aggregated defense. And Mike Evans will learn under Vincent Jackson. Now, the running game is a little bit because Doug Martin sustained that, you know, unventful, you know, injury that he got, you know, feel sorry for the guy, but, you know, it's it's professional football, but he's going to come back strong. Now, Carolina, Cam Newton does not have all of his three starting receivers. You know why? Ted Ginn went to Arizona, Brandon LaFell, New England, Steve Smith, Baltimore. Who's his new three course receivers? They got Jericho Cotri. Jason Avon and the rookie Kelvin Benjamin. I think Cam Newton is just going to have to adapt to a new set of receivers. Of course, he'll still have Williams and Stewart with Greg Olson as still the tight end. It's just right now, Carolina has a problem with Cam Newton staying healthy. If you can't stay healthy, what's the point? Let's figure that out. Now, of course, Saints are going to win because look at their receiver corps. Colston and Kenny Stills. Brandon Cooks did good this last two games with the Saints as the rookie receiver. And, of course, the return of Robert Meacham. You know, Drew Brees is going to be fine. He's going to throw over 3,500 yards this season. Running game, I'm not even worried about it because Brees knows what to do. Now, Atlanta just got back Julio Jones. And Roddy White, I think this is his last year of playing. He's like 34. Roddy White can't, Roddy White can't play no more. The running game is still sucks for the Falcons because Steven Jackson can't stay healthy. So I got the Saints as winning that division with I'm gonna shock y'all. Yes, Tampa is gonna outbeat Carolina and Atlanta for that wild card spot. I'm not gonna sleep on the Bucks. They're gonna do pretty good. Alright, um we're gonna move on to we're gonna move on to the uh NFC North, which is the Chicago Bears, the Detroit Lions, the Groomer Packers, and the Minnesota Vikings. We're gonna start off with Lou as I plug in my charger. Team charger. Wow, what a division! What a division. Um, uh, is AP gonna be AP? I don't think so. I think they're gonna win his plane. He he's gonna run back for punts, so I, they're using him for that now. So, um, I think they're gonna miss the playoffs there. Uh, Green Bay. Aaron Rodgers. Uh, will he perform good? Yeah, he was okay last year. Uh, Detroit. Uh, got the uh, uh, Calvin Johnson and uh, a lot of firepower there. I think I see uh, Detroit winning that division there. Um, Chicago. I do not see anything there. So. Yeah, that's all I have to say about that division. All right, MVP, sir, NFC North. I'll just tell you right now, and I hate to be mean, and if Liger watches this, he's going to probably be a little bit ticked off. <laughs> I, don't, I don't see Chicago making it. I'm sorry. Mm. Forte mm. is going to keep that running back depth down. When they lost Michael Bush, it's going to pretty much tell you that Chicago's not going to have much of a running game. Now, Jay Cutler, they gave him that 10-year, $126 million contract. I hope Mark Trestman's happy with himself. But I'll still give Brandon Marshall and Alshon Jeffrey their credit. I think that's one of the top two ten receivers in the NFC North. But I see Chicago not winning. Detroit, Matthew Stafford is still shaky right now. Reggie Bush it has been invigorated. He ran over 1,200 last season with the Lions. And now that Calvin Johnson has Golden Tate as a better number two receiver, I think they're going to do well. Minnesota, when y'all lost Toby Gerhardt, 
that pretty much says y'all gonna lean on AP this season. Mm-hmm. Y'all got no receivers except for Patterson and old ass Greg Jennings. That pretty much tells your tale. So my winners again are gonna be the Packers. Aaron, good job on coming back through your collarbone injury. Sorry, sorry, my team beat you, but y'all gave us a game. So I'll give you kudos for coming back. Eddie Lacy, good, good damn running season. I'll give it to you, good damn running season. And with Randall Cobb and Jordy Nelson, I'll give it to you guys. I will give it to you. So uh, I got Green Bay outbeating Chicago for that division and Minnesota and Detroit just looking for prayer. All right. All right. Detroit looking for prayer? Is that what you said? Detroit looking for the prayer? Yes, Detroit's looking for prayer because Stafford has been shaky. I'm sorry. Yeah, Stafford hasn't – Stafford has been shaky. Uh, Yes, he has. Yeah, but they got the receivers. They like, like you said, they got Tate, they got uh, Calvin. You know. Yep. Yeah, the only thing that's they'll saving them they'll is they'll Calvin. Throw over 4, oh, sure. but, yeah, but yeah. no, the only thing saving them right now is Calvin. And now that Tate is there, they don't have to look anywhere else. And they're and they're two tight ends with Joseph Fari and Eric Ebron. Come so on. Who's good? So Basically. who else is going to get ten with that? I mean, like you said, Bears are not going to win. What's Minnesota? So it's going to be a two two uh, team fighting that one. Green Bay and Detroit. I mean, you can't even see Minnesota winning. It's you can't good. even see Chicago doing anything. I see, I see Green Bay outbeat Chicago because those are the two better teams right now. Yeah. I don't think this is But the well, Anyways, anyways <laughs> let me sit y'all straight for a second. <clears throat> um, this right here, <laughs> this is the symbol of excellence in the National Football League. Thank you very much. Uh, let me get let me sit y'all for a second. The Minnesota Vikings, they got AP. That is it. Matt Castle sucks. I've not seen anything of Teddy Bridgewater, so I can't judge the guy. I tell you, I tell you, Minnesota's probably one of the few teams I can't name a single receiver on that team because they suck so bad. The Detroit Lions they got a good QB and a good wide receiver combo in Matthew Stafford and Calvin Johnson, but that, that's all I really can see. I, I don't really, like, I mean, there are other players that step up occasionally, but that's just all I see from them. The Chicago Bears, I give them a better chance because Jay Cutler is not a terrible quarterback. But he's not great either. What's good about Jay Cutler isn't Jay Cutler's ability. It's the men that are catching the ball. Brandon Marshall, Alshon Jeffries, uh, what are they guys? Martellus? No, not Martellus. Wait, no. Whatever the hell those guys, Bennett guys, whatever. I have no idea. And... and and they shine Joshua Morgan from Washington, but he's currently on a four-game suspension for being arrested. Well, there you go. <laughs> Green Bay, on the other hand, I mean, look, we got we got one of the top five quarterbacks in football today. Whether you hate the Packers, you want to make jokes about calling them gay, calling them fudge Packers, whatever the fuck you want to say, get that bullshit out of here. Aaron Rodgers is one of the top five. For me, he is the top quarterback in the league today. I can understand, you know, arguments for Peyton Manning and uh, Drew Brees and um, uh, uh, Tom Brady. But in my opinion, Aaron Rodgers is the top player quarterback today. Then you got Jordy Nelson. Uh, oh, fuck. Um... Randall Cobb, fucking, pretty much any time we get a receiver, we make that receiver into a star. Look how, I mean, look, fucking James Jones left, and he was pretty decent. Greg Jennings, well, you know, whatever. Um, what's the other guy's name? Oh, wait, did he, sorry, didn't he retire, I think? Um, uh, what's, what's the guy's name I'm forgetting? The one that fucked up his neck or whatever at the end of last, uh, last season. Which team was he from? Green Bay. The the I think he hurt his neck or one. Uh, not uh. Oh God, what's his name? 
Uh, I think I think he hurt his neck. He he got like carted off the field. I think. Um, I'm not sure. Fuck. Not um. Jonathan Franklin. No, no, it was a wide receiver. I think. Um, or a tight end. Donald Lee. No, I, I don't know. I can't remember his name, but um, point is. If that guy ends up playing, if I can remember his name, or if he's healed or even actually plays football ever again, uh, he's good too. And then on defense, we got fucking Clay Matthews. We got fucking Julius Peppers from the Bears. I mean, our defense has never been fantastic, but I mean, well, B. Well, what we're really gonna be hurting on is our nose tackle. Fucking B. J. Raji is out for the fucking season. But we have Brian Bulaga back. This season, fucking he's good. I know I, I could test BJ Raji's kind of overrated because he doesn't do much. He just kind of stands right in the middle. So but that's just me. We got so much going on now, and I truly believe that we are gonna just just ram this division straight into the ground. As long as Aaron Rodgers don't get hurt, and we have to rely on shitty ass Matt Flynn. We'll be fine. Anyways, the final division. I saved this one for last just because I thought it would be funny. Who is your pick for the North, or should we ask? Oh, Packers. <laughs> okay. And now the final division, because I saved this for last on purpose. The NFC East, the Washington Redskins, the Philadelphia Eagles, the New York Giants, and the team that everyone calls America's team, but in which rarely aren't America's team. Because they're full of shit. And to me, if you're America's team, you can't be a loser. You can't lose, 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 and lose and be America's team. Like, Because America is about winning. And they lose. So whatever. The Dallas Cowboys. Oops. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to start this one off. I'm starting this all one off for a reason. The Washington Redskins aren't going to do shit. They may, they may win a game over two more than they did last year, but they ain't going to do shit. The New York Giants have are definitely going to improve this season, I feel. They're not going to start 0-6. Definitely won't start 0-6, but they're not winning this division either. This division is coming down to the Dallas Cowboys and, to me, the Philadelphia Eagles. And here is the interesting note. I think, and I actually believe this wholeheartedly, this is the season. This is it. The Dallas Cowboys, I repeat, the Dallas Cowboys will win. I repeat, the Dallas Cowboys will win the NFC East and advance to the playoffs. I am calling it right now. You can laugh all you want. Look at this joker tipping his chin up in the air. Okay. I'm telling you, the Cats have going to win the NFC East. I based that on absolutely nothing. I based that on absolutely nothing, but just my personal gut feeling. I feel the other teams don't have anything right now to really... I just feel every other team is going to have issues. I just feel, I think Cowboys are going to just run away with it. So let's start with, let's go over to Lou. What, what kind of smart-ass comment you got to say about, about what I just said, sir? I don't think there's no smart-ass comment. I'm just going to say Dallas. Okay, um, anyway, of all four teams, what quarterback's going to show up? RG3, he's, he's injury-prone. I don't think he's going to be nothing in the game this year. Um, Manning, uh, one year he's good, one year he's bad. So is this a good year for him? Maybe. We don't know. Uh, Tony Romo, he's always good the first six to eight games. After that, where are they at? You know what I'm saying? Philadelphia, they got Foles. He's doing pretty good. Uh, we got McCoy as running back. Uh, so, uh, I don't see Dallas even making... I don't even see him making the playoffs. I really don't. I see Philadelphia running with it. 
if you got too many good teams in the other divisions, you just get the two wild card spots. I, I do not see Dallas making it again. I'm sorry, Mike, but I just don't. So, what picks Philadelphia for that conference? MVP. I know you got some smart ass ghetto, <laughs> you know, West Coast 49ers, San Francisco Giants loving bullshit comments coming at me. What you got? First of all, Jerry Jones should be ashamed of himself talking about America's team when he paid for a quarterback that's not a playoff quarterback. Tony Romo, he's just about done. Uh, this is a guy that gets paid these top dollars but can't perform in the postseason. A regular season, he's decent. Postseason, stick a fork in him. Jesus Christ. This, this is an utter joke. On the other hand, Washington, I'm sorry. Kirk Cousins is going to be the starter for, for the Redskins. RG3 did sit his ass down someplace. Kirk Cousins has came to the table. Alfred Morris, unfortunately, he suffered an injury during preseason. There's no timetable when he's going to return. I know they're going to need him for their running game receivers. Uh, bleh. Moving on, New York, I'm sorry, Eli Manning, but I don't see the Giants doing it either. Good good tandem receivers with, with Ruben Randall, Victor Cruz, and, and uh, what's his name, Jernigan, forget his first name, but the Giants' defense sucks. Y'all lost Justin Tuck. Yeah, about to lose J Jason Pierre Paul if y'all ain't careful. And my pick is gonna be the and my pick is gonna be the Eagles. I'm sorry. Shady McCoy led the running back post with over fifteen hundred yards. Come on. LaShawn Shady McCoy. Fifteen hundred yards. Nick Foles. You think that seven you think that seven touchdown game he threw was a joke? Look what he did against Oakland. That, that that was just a game of hey, here catch. The Raiders weren't gonna do shit on Philly. Sorry. So I see Philadelphia, and let's not mention the Eagles do got Darren Sproles. So I mean, now that Sproles and Shady will now share a little bit of the carries or you know half screen passes, and also too I forgot to mention Jeremy Macklin. He just came back off an of injury, is re-injured. So looking forward to Riley Cooper picking it up again. And my sleeper of the of the of the season, and which Lou, I'm gonna tell you who the sleeper is that I'm gonna be looking for is Zach Ertz. Zach Ertz from Philly. His guy got promise. So Philly is gonna win the NFC East. And Jerry Jones should just retire right now. Sorry. <laughs> okay, to finish this, to finish this up, I know you guys have already said it, but just to clear up for the hopeful people that are watching this and hopeful people who will watch it later, your your wild cards from each each conference. Just to clear, just to clarify. Each conference wild card. MVP. All right, my wild cards for both AFC and AFC. I got, I got Tampa, and possibly either San Francisco and Seattle. Because, like I said earlier, it's gonna be a dog fight between the Se Seattle and San Francisco. So, whoever wins the the West, the other team's gonna get that. But of course, Tampa's gonna get the other one. The secondary one, San Diego. And just because I think they have a legitimate chance this season, I'm just going to go with Miami. All right, Lou, your wild cards. All right, let's start with the NFC. My wild cards would be San Francisco. I know, MVP won't like that. And, uh, ooh, this sixth spot is going to be tough. I'm going to say Atlanta. 
Yeah, if C, I say New England. That is pretty good too. New England and uh, and the Chiefs. All right. As for me, folks, the AFC side, I'd probably have to change this in the spreadsheet because I know I was really high on that shit when I said this. But um, I might have to change that. I am gonna, I'm gonna say the uh, the wow, I'm drawing a complete blank here. The uh, wild cards will be, um, hmm. I'm going to say the Texans get a wild card, and I will say the Chiefs. I'm going to say the Chiefs and Texans get the wild card. Anyways, folks, thank you if you put up, through the, put up with us as I forgot to turn the camera back to me again when I made my prediction. I got to stop doing that. Yes, that was me that just said the Chiefs and the Texans folk, not Lou. That was me. Um, if you put up with this whole video, thank you so much for listening to my annoying voice. Um, to wrap this up, let's just go back and just say goodbye to everybody. Lou, Lou, you got any final words for the people? Uh, just like to say, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, hope we do more to come this year, and uh, go Miami. MVP, you got any final word? And if you want, you can tell people about uh, what what else you're doing besides uh, football on the internet. <laughs> All right. Well, Mike, thanks for bringing me on to your your video, and uh, I know Bill will probably watch this. Be like, why wasn't I invited? Uh, we did look out for you, but you were busy, so you can't say we didn't invite you. Uh, just enjoy the video. I mean, you know, just let us know how you feel about the video. And of course, I am a wrestling writer for Hardcore Wrestling Radio upon my fa upon our Facebook page at facebookcom wrestling radio. Uh, for Mike's friends that are wrestling fans, come check it out. Like our page. We do shows every other Tuesday. Uh, we do segments on Saturdays and. Uh, Hope the Niners beat out Seattle this season. So, like I said, thank you for putting up with us. More videos to come, hopefully. And, of course, you guys know, anyone that watches that does know me, mostly you probably don't, but whatever, that I'm just, I'm just chilling. I just play video games, watch uh, stuff on YouTube, football. I work, you know, pretty much living a normal life. Um, I may start gaming videos on YouTube at some point. Just have to get the capture device first. I stream on Twitch, twitch.tv slash micabioa1. I do this here on YouTube. There will be a lot more stuff to come. As for when you see in the intro, you see shows like Under the Dome, Walking Dead, all that stuff. I haven't reviewed Under the Dome yet. I'm going to eventually. I'll get to it. It's just a matter of me giving a shit. I care about the show. Just I just don't care to do a review. Anyways, folks, thank you for watching. And until next time... Uh, let's see, what's a good closing line? Um, oh, well, since this is Cordfield Production Studios, always remember, eat your corn with butter. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs>